All right, welcome back to the second set, Ionix and Sinus, the next best of three that will lead to the decision who has to pack their things and will leave the Winter Circuit 2024. While we are setting everything up, we are already good to go very soon. Don't worry about it. Let's talk real quick about Cinnabite, Nurse and Mastermind. Cinnabite is one of these very loved competitive killers we have to say that a lot of teams love picking scrimming and facing each other on it nurse great to see her come back she was a little bit more silent i would say a lot of people avoided her m1 comp really started to shine now she's back in a lot of matchups so i feel like it's a great combination of killers here today yeah, some really, really high tier killers um, for two high tier teams, right? Eonix, um, they've, they've been phenomenal and were so unlucky to be knocked down into the losers bracket. They they've been so good, but like we were saying um, when we saw them last week, there's a lot of potential within Team Eonix, right? They made their losers run in the All Hallows League all the way from round one to the losers final. I pick is someone to shout out as well. He's been on absolute fire. He's so on form. But if I had to say something about the team, because they've got some great survivors as well, like Swatter, SH, formerly known as Sasua, um, D Rice, these are all fantastic survivors who can all add like a really key element to the game. But if there's one thing I had to pick apart from the Onyx, is I find they're heavily reliant on IPIC's performance. And as you were saying with this killer pool, right, these are some killers that require some really, really good precision. Like Pinhead has got to keep up mm -hmm. the pressure a lot there's a lot on the killer nurse of course because she's so oppressive because she's so powerful you really need to do well otherwise the other team's killer might just outperform you and wesker as well has so much tech um so there's a lot on i pick it a lot resting on his shoulders i'm not sure if he's going to play all the games but i would imagine so um and then on the flip side we got sinners right a kind of newish team to dbd league um mm -hmm. who made a massive upset on cynic last week and da you watched that one and what a, what a showing that was. Absolutely. Uh, they were playing so coordinated and so well. And then also with three survivors. Why three survivors? Because they had an internet cut in the middle of the game. And there's no restart for that because that's player responsibility. And we were really scared because they were moving. They were in a very good spot. And then randomly losing one survivor upsets everything. You cannot plan for it. Your generator pressure is dropping. Uh, you are such such an easy target now because you only have three individuals across your team. And against the odds and against this, first of all, very dangerous Cynic opponent. It's, it's not like... Cynic isn't known. Cynic is a very professional, very, very high skill team. And against this DC and against this strong opponent, they just casually pulled some stages out of the door after showing us the potentially one of the greatest recovery plays we have seen in DVD League today. Uh, so whatever they are yeah. planning for today, they should better be prepared for a very coordinated survivor team on the side of Sinners here. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, Sinners need to bring to the table because, as I was just mentioning, I feel like Eonix are heavily reliant on IPIC, and if he doesn't show up in one of the games, it can go badly for them, which I, I feel like is what we saw um, the other day with Elysium versus Eonix, right? That could have gone that could have gone so well for Eonix, but they felt a bit too reliant on IPIC. So if Sinners are able to bring it to IPIC every single game, that could be really, really strong, and that could definitely play into the hand, and we could see another upset in a row for sinners and as we were talking about the other day this is the tournament of upsets right so many teams bouncing before <laughs> bouncing um out of the winners round into the losers round it's such a stacked losers bracket i'd be terrified if i was um to come across any of these teams in my path saying that we've got eonix versus sinners dire i'm going to ask you for your predictions who is taking this and is it going to be a clean 2-0 or are we going to a game three Oh, that's uh... yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, I'll, I'll let that's you rough. meditate on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough. Like on the one side, Ione, like I pick Swatter, Sasua, Darius. Like just stating these names mm -hmm. is enough of a reason to justify a two-zero prediction for them. On the other hand, Sinners, great coordination so much of enthusiasm for the game representing the entire south america scene after not being allowed for years in dbdl so 
the one team has the experience it takes, the other team has the energy it takes. And whenever something like this is clashing, it can go either 2-0 for either side, either Sinus is overrolling Ionix and the experience won't help, or Ionix is just staying so cool and so casually calm that it's not going to happen and Ionix is just taking the 2-0, but I really wish that we are going into the tiebreaker because I feel like if there's any game today that would be super interesting to watch three sets, then it's this one right here. Nah, what do I you agree. think? <laughs> nah, no, I agree with you. And I, I, I mean, I sympathize with your sigh when I asked you for prediction because <laughs> it's, 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 it's really hard to tell with these two teams. Like on paper, everything says Ionix, but then it's also Sinners who, as you were saying, are just, they're so up for it. They're so ready. And if anything was to be learned from their previous um, game uh, in the loser's bracket, is that they're capable of anything. So uh, I, I don't know what to think either. And I hate to let the viewers down by not giving a full-on prediction, but my just hope is the same as you, is that we get to a game three set. Because Wesker on a game three is great as well. You have such a variety with the add-ons normally. Um, it can lead to really different and interesting play styles. And it looks like we're heading straight into our first game in just like about 30 seconds. So buckle up, folks. We are ready and we are underway with Ionix versus Sinners. We could go to a game three Wesker, but first up, it's gonna be Pinhead on Wretched Shop, a tier four killer, which means even some of our kind of weak strong perks like DS, Inner Strength Leader, a lot of the healing perks, we don't have Sprint Burst, they're all banned. So although Pinhead is a pretty strong killer, they're in the tier 4 category, which means a lot of this stuff is banned. And I'm sure, Dyer, we're going to see Impaling Wire as at least one of the add-ons for Pinhead. Yeah, we, like, the Cenobite has to bring quite some stuff that is able to hold the survivors back paired with a very good early game getting the first few tags making sure that we have hook stages early on keeping them busy and talking about keeping them busy we see the sloppy butcher here so injuries will take a lot longer to be fully reset we are having sana on the side of team Sinners and moving in straight towards the box, the dream start for any Cenobite, especially on a larger map like this one, immediately applying some pressure here onto the survivors. And it seems like we've located someone at the Shack. Very, very good detection here by our killer Grey Chain as well, not joking around as all, potentially getting the most valuable resource out of the way right from the start. Yeah, Sana's going to be looking to apply pressure. As we met, touched on a little bit in the campfire chat, a lot of this game is on the killer. Yes, there can be great team play with breaking chains for each other, finding the box. But if the killer is able to regularly locate the box uh, with good game knowledge, good game sense, because it will spawn as far away, basically, from the survivors and killers as possible. Um, and they're able to hit all their chains in the right spot. They can do a lot of damage to survivors. But not resting on Sana's soldiers as they hit Swatter through the four wall pallet. Um, who's just going to hold M1 for a bit of distance. Lightweight and calm spirit maybe to help um, cause a bit of a lack of tracking. Um, there's no better other words for it um, from Sana. But no, Swan is going down and it looks like they're going to be collapsing at the foot of this hill. Now let's see how they are moving forward here onto the uh, jungle gym. Will he reach the turn? That's not going to happen, Spotter going down right here now we do see the first generator being prepared by the rice in exchange for the first hook stage that is actually going to be two generators here potentially except we get the pain rest and that's going to be huge clutch on the main building yeah beautiful timing there um crucial slowdown which we're also going to get from the original pain right everyone knows that impaling wire something that when you break a chain you're going to get more chains on you but the uh, original pain uh, other add-on, the one that looks a bit like a pin, um, means when you break free, you're gonna be hitting the deep wound. So that will slow things down as well if Sana decides not to completely um, kind of close it out after hitting someone with a wire. So that could have a cool effect as well. We'll have to see how that goes later in the game. For the meantime, Sana seems to be kind of sauntering around the hook, maybe looking to secure second stage here. This second stage would be a good start into the game, especially now where your pain rest caused a little bit of damage and made sure that uh, the survivors have 
to take some additional moments here to prepare the generators. Let's see if they are going for rescue in time. It seems very silent around the hook here, so they might prioritize the three generators that they have left to go, and that's going to happen. Spotter is going to say thank you to the teammates later in this team profile comment section, but we can only hope that this is going to be paying out here, because gens before friends usually means that they are very confident that going for any sacrifice like this is going to pay off for them and we better see a couple of gents here carry yeah i mean we haven't seen anyone remotely near the hook which means the decision was made early and they're going to be straight onto these generators shack one that's just a solo one that's on one stage but this one over here is at 50 percent as well and it's ace coming in for the save uh, they've been hooked pretty early on here, so it's going to be an instant trade after the unhook. Ace goes down. Now, what does Sun start to do? Do they want to tunnel out, or are they going to get this hook first, then try and locate Swatter later? It seems like they favor the latter. The rice goes up onto the hook, and now Sana is going to try and hunt down Swatter. And now it's going to be the big question once again. Will they come in and provide a lot of help? dropping the generator um, efficiency here a little bit or will steve just casually go on a huge run here but sana lost track a little bit has the fresh hook on the hook and steve actually made it out of the dangerous area right, wait, instead value. we are going for uh, sasua now one of the healthy survivors and one of the unhealthy survivors so if swatter is able to face a reset and then staying away from the action and that is a very very far away from the action there inside of the shack that is going to be a huge move by team ionix killer was expecting that the filler palette is going to be used but sasua just they're holding w towards this little truck here yeah, that's going to be now the patience game number one on the astros maps going into the vault into balanced landing oh, back towards the center pallet but the chain predicting that going for it but the pallet is in reach and the killer is rotating away here ionix seems like they are being caught by the killer and then last second going to pull something crazy so beautiful to watch I can't believe Sasua got away there. I mean, you were right. Swatter did so well to kind of save that stealth out. Lightweight uh, coming in clutch a little bit for us, Steve. But uh, Sasua, uh, how they stayed alive in any of that, I've got absolutely no idea. I hope it gets hit through and gets a barrel of chains for it. Bombarded. And it seems like they're not done yet. They completely missed um, Pinhead going back around the pallet. Just ended up looking at the wall, trying to see a check spot through the cracks of the Auto Haven tiles completely missed Pinhead going around and that's a very very quick chase so Sasua did well that's a good recovery um for team sinners and a pain res here could slow things down the pain res once again coming in clutch here for our killer four stages so far four generators in exchange so definitely the efficiency high the survivor team not giving away too much here their eyes not going to face the chase not entirely sure yet because cinnabite definitely arguing with himself is he going to chase the survivor a little bit away from the gens potentially risking over commitment or are we guarding the gens but look at that disgusting spread that our uh, survivor team has created here there's no chance to defend this setup whatsoever so much distance between the sing uh, individual generators here and we are going back into the main building sasua shown a very impressive chase but not this time it's going to be the quick down here with a very great chain application breaking the main door as well the survivors not going to worry too much about resetting only one injured survivor therefore hopping onto the final generators we see them here 80 percent already pain, right? is it going to be the final pain risk coming in clutch here that's going to be the question where's the hook oh no that was last second before end game Oh, it's so unfortunate yeah. <laughs> there for Team Ionix. That was so, so close. And I was going to mention this, that it's the last pain res they've got. So now everything comes down to the chase. Just, that was an unfortunate moment there for Ionix. But they can bounce back with some really, really good chases. The gens are so spread out. There you go. They've been popped anyway. The pain res stalled them for a little bit. But they're right back on it. So now here comes the chase. 
We're going on towards, uh, I think it was the rice there. Yes, he's taking it round towards the end of Shaq. And I don't think Zana's going to get more than one elimination. Not really like any precious survivors to go for. Three of them all with two stages. What with one stage, who might be coming in, takes this hit. He can take it down, but the chain slowed him down. He can't get through to take the body blocks. If he can run back through Sha Shaq, he might just get there in time. And he does. We could actually see four out here if Swatic can get the body blocks. The, uh, the chain on, I can't keep my breath on the wall. Everything is going on there. Team ready chains. What is happening? Swatter takes the body block and they get out. No so way. What, what there is happened? no way. We just went from an almost completed fifth generator that is being punished with a pain rest last second to a four-man escape with the greatest team coordination and body blocks of all times. Jesus Christ, Ionix taking an absolute grind on the end game, bumping Sinners down to just five stages in the opening trial here in their best of three. I'm out of words too. I mean, I'm shouting right now, but <laughs> I now it's out coming to end. Where's our, where's our analyst? Maybe he can sort it a little bit calmer. Rats, <laughs> this end game, your statement, please. Oi, oi, oi. What a messy endgame for sure that was. I, I'm amazed and honestly the perk choices on both sides and the value that both teams have gotten out of their perks that they have brought on both sides as well. We've seen the brutal strength on the Xenobites which is not very common. We haven't seen Xenobites also played on ping. This is also gonna be said a ping matchup. We have seen Xenobite on ping also but then we have seen like a save the best for last maybe or like and no one escapes death because, you know, you would not expect necessarily to, to, to fork here with this killer. But uh, Brutal Strength, very interesting to pick, but also the value was there. Breaking the, like, Shack Pallet, for example, and other fillers to shut down the distance that the survivors would reach, were gonna reach after that. Um, maybe uh, no, one no one escapes death would have probably still been better here, but I really like the, the idea of that perk. Um, we have seen the lightweight. I want to just mention in the beginning we have had um, the killer pick up the box and then we've seen the survivors pick up the box themselves and the killer teleport after leaving the chase on Shaq from, from IPIC. And that person that had the box was their calm spirit player. A player that they don't want to have chased at all costs necessarily. And they also had lightweight on them so in case they do get chased Maybe the killer might lose them, and that's exactly what happened after the second stage of the hook and the trade. The survivor, uh, the killer lost the survivor due to that light trade, most likely at least. And insane perk value. At the end, the hope, I mean, what are you gonna say? Like, you just ran around check, and I think it was the Steve that just got obliterated by the chains, was able to still take the block there on the check, um, check door, simply because the... Ace, I think it was Ace Winston Chase with the hope, which kept, just kept running around check with that hope and wasting that time that they needed for that body block. I mean, oppressive endgame especially, that was just really well coordinated and completely messy with all these chains coming from all sorts of different directions due to breaking them in all sorts of ways. I mean, it's a tall order. What was it, like five stages, four fresh, I think? So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good news, it's for fresh hooks, but bad news, it's only five stages. We'll see if I pick chose to run an endgame perk. Maybe we see a no one escapes death, maybe not. And we will see it in a second when we load in, because the perks have been locked in already. But five stages is definitely a rough, uh, rough task for the survivors here to, uh, to, to beat. <laughs> no, thank you for dissecting that one. I mean, that, that last endgame just... Uh, 50 million chains spawned on the map. Um, I want to quickly touch on though before that the kind of game plan from um, from from Sinners' killer. It didn't seem that clear to me, and I wonder if you can dissect a bit more. You you touched on brutal strength, and you touched on sloppy, and we, we had pain resin corrupt as well. Were they trying to get the tunnel out? Was that the plan? But after losing Steve, they decided to defend Gens because the Gens seemed spread out. They didn't get a tunnel out. I couldn't quite understand what the setup was and what the goal was for our, our pinhead in that game 
Now the issue that the killer had here was that the first chase was quite long, considering it was a Xenobite. Um, you've seen the first chase on Ipic on Shag, using the Shag pellet, and then the killer teleport away, and then having another chase. The first person got downed, the first gen already popped, and the second gen was very far on its way, like it was 90% then got painless. So I definitely understand the camp to second stage, that was definitely the right play as well in my opinion. And I also understand why the killer chose to not immediately go for the Tana out, because of the way that he didn't have much time for it. Even with the um, with the add-on of the Xenobite that you just break the mending and get the survivor killed even though the he has BT still on him. So I understand why he chose to pick up the survivor to get another painless stack right off the bat to buy time for the tunnel out. But unfortunately the killer lost the survivor most likely due to the lightweight which was really punishing for them. Because otherwise I know the gens were far but I think the tunnel out would have gone through on one gen remaining with no three gen, but one gen remaining with all gens being like the zero percent. We have seen Shaq really far and the other generator near the hook towards like the right of main on top right, like people would call it one probably, uh, really far progressed. Both would have popped for the tunnel out, but the ace that got the trade was actually not working a generator at all. He was like rotating for the box, solving the box and then coming for the save already, which I don't think um, they would have popped endgame for the tunnel out if he just chose to go for it immediately. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I've, got, I've got nothing to add. That's such a beautiful uh, analysis and dissection. Um, I guess hindsight is twenty twenty though. So if if you can say it was a mistake on the killer side, I'm not sure we can. I mean, there's so much high pressure. So many ways it could have gone. Um, also, the end game. No one could have foreseen that coming. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't either, Direwolf. We've now got five oh, no. stages um we've got five stages to try and defend um for eon eonic so that's going to be easy can the survivors of sinners do it i mean we've seen an amazing survivor performance from them already with that dc against cynic um this one isn't a man down but you just cannot allow a lot of stages is this going to be harder or easier than what they had to deal with when they had that dc well, I, I would say if they had more wiggle room of like two or three additional hook stages, like seven or eight, then I would say they can really take some positive energy out of what they have done against Cynic last week. But with this difficulty here, I'm not entirely sure because they definitely face I would say a very experienced killer on this Cenobite. So this is not going to leave a lot of wiggle room when we are talking about outplaying the killer. They are going to face a very experienced team as well. A lot of people on the Onyx roster are around for years in the competitive scene. So this also cuts the chances of outplaying the opponent team. And therefore, Sinners will definitely face way harder challenge than in the previous games well let's see now if it's going to work out we are on the ratchet shop we do have the cenobite on our hands i pick going to be the killer one of the most famous players in the competitive community sloppy butcher once again together with pain rest so kind of the same approach but we actually see a save the best for last so confident uh, confident pick here, going for a lot of pressure, and looking forward to throw the survivors off. Uh, yeah, and well, we're just going to have to see how this one unfolds because it's all on the survivors here. It should be pretty comfortable for Eonix. But as we did touch on, right, Pinhead's one of the, another one of these killers uh, we're going to see all throughout this best of three, um, where the killer really does have to be on point. It's not just a free win. Uh, you need to use your skill to locate the box. You need to be able to hit your chains well. Um, and follow them up in good positions. So, still some work to do, but it should be pretty comfortable for Eonix. Let's see what Bucky can do as he walks straight into the chain. But already we've got a body block. It doesn't come in. Lisa was so almost there for a body block, which could, which could have been a fantastic start for the survivors. Instead, it's a pretty early down, and that's a lot of survivors not doing generators. Absolutely, I was just about to say that this needed to work, because when you're just talking about six stages for the killer here, and you are talking about a tight win condition that is supposed to be faced and then you need every single thing to work out you need to waste time 
If you decide to go for a body block, if you don't, then you lose the efficiency on the generators. Now we have one working on the generators and two survivors, unfortunately not being able to rescue Bucky here. And now it's a basement hook on top of that, making the rescue at least a little bit harder for them. We do see that we saved the pain rest stack for uh, IPIC, so he can use this later when he notices that the pressure is getting a little bit more intense. On the other hand, unfortunately, the chains are not going to work out onto the survivor we located here on the broken truck so so far it's a back and forth between killer and survivors both are making some good moves at the start here but so far i see the advantage on the side of ipic yeah definitely but i can't fault uh, sinners for going for something like that and i commend it they needed a, a play um like coming in and taking the body blocks it just didn't quite work out and that's what's going to happen sometimes when you go for the stuff when you're playing for a difficult win condition you have to take risks as is the theme of today um you have to take risks and it didn't quite work out there but they're not out of it yet oh the box gets interrupted as it's getting solved that's a beautiful snipe from ipic um those two gens are very close so they maybe they pop those and then go in for it this is difficult because they cannot have Bucky eliminated here, that would just be way too difficult. Absolutely, uh, two stages onto Bucky, 20 seconds away from the elimination. Yeah, two generators, but then you have half time on the win condition for IPIC, and still generators to go, and there's a chain out of nowhere. IPIC playing with the Mario Kart wheel, forcing the chain around the corner onto the survivor. Very good stuff right here. Now he's just holding it. Look at this disgusting camper, is what a first time <laughs> chat would type in our twitch but this is strategy <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is, high and this level is gameplay. what you work <laughs> for and this is what you deserve when you get a survivor very early down in this game and therefore now uh, generator pressure cut down to three individual survivors and ipic is looking ahead for potentially facing the win condition yeah well i said they couldn't let that one go but they decided to and luckily they didn't you know spend any resources any time off gens trying to go for it they just recognized that um ipic was never gonna let bucky get out of that basement alive um, and decided to just crack on with generators look this team is good with three with three survivors so let's see what they can cook up but three generators with three survivors even if they weren't playing for a tight win condition i would say this is a really horrible situation so everything is against them now it'll take a miracle to do this doesn't drop the pallet amazing patience but only gets rid of one of the chains which is gonna go down gustavo hits the deck and i think it's gonna be sending her to the basement as well over time yeah, this was a P or this was a short glimpse on the potential Sinners has. Like this insane patience while a survivor is already lost, while you are chained, uh, was something that really shows the individual skills of these players. Very great and fast, coordinated, safe, and from the hook as well. Unfortunately, facing the chains immediately, a slow walled coming out, but I pick with his experience reading that move, making sure that this is going to be a very quick down right here. Now, we are going into the next chase with the flashlight rescue. What? That is a little. -hoo -hoo -hoo. I didn't see the oh, light there. I was so worried, but the chains are now going to stop him. That's a double down. And I feel like, yeah, Sinners had to take a lot of risk, but now he was shutting it down. Yeah, and I, I, I like to say them. I like to see them taking these risks, like they're really aware of the situation they're in. It shows just good kind of around like game sense, good, good, just like team coordination, saying, look, we've got to go for this. Um, and they are like valid attempts. <laughs> it just haven't quite worked out. And I think it's a phenomenal killer. Um, so it looks like they're not going to be winning this one. But, you know, they've got potential the Nurse set to win. And if they do that, they can go onto the West Cassette. We're going to get a nice chase here out of Kate as the other two get slugged to death. No unbreakable against our tier four uh, pinhead killer. So don't worry about that. Um, that chain here was quite far away from the panel, which means they're now going to have to play it tightly. Or they're going to greet it all the way and take an M1 before they get to the window. Now we are seeing the next injury on to the survivor here, spreading the pressure even further. Meanwhile, Gustavo still being on the ground, Sweet Child joining on the ground as well, and we Jason has been located on top. Gustavo being picked up here, Sinus fighting, but unfortunately, Sinus is fighting, not fighting for the win condition. Sinus is just fighting to stay alive. 
unfortunately, Chase, I think Ipic was very confused where that survivor came from. But once again, two slugs, and it seems like we'll even see a 4k here. I, uh, I have absolutely no idea what happened to that fun bus. Um, it, I picked didn't want to down Renata. He, he he had a change of heart. He was like, I, I'm always the bad guy. What if what if I do something nice for a change? Uh, and then instantly went back on that decision. We got Lisa now. Gustavo um, taking this what should be the final chase around Shaq. No, I pick misses the chains and will comfortably get to this pallet. Again, we treat to an extra lap of the Shaq. So in case you forgot what the killer Shaq looked like in Dead by Daylight, here it is again from all angles. <laughs> um, difficult, <laughs> difficult to explain what's happening here because it really feels like we're just drawing out the inevitable. And we are spectating the Shaq a little bit longer. It was a very important location for this best of three here, I think now. Shutting it down with a good chain and just going around it. Yeah, once again, Pressure today onto the teams because whoever is losing the best of three is going to leave the winter circuit. This was definitely not the opening set or the opening trial you would ask for on the side of Team Sinners here being 4 k with two remaining generators because this means in terms of the win condition that Ionic survivors can ignore any 3-gen. They just need to get four generators out of the way here. And that is definitely a dominant start for Team Ionix here. Uh, yeah, they, they've done they've done really really well, um, and I think I'm just trying to think going forward here like how the mood in the Sinners camp will be because they had a, like a really tough win condition to play for. Um, they couldn't make it work, but but I'm sure they're going to bounce back and I'm sure they're ready um, to take the Mercer, uh, you know, make the one extra one. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm just a little bit disappointed that it wasn't as strong a performance as we probably were expecting from Sinners, given their recent uh, performance in losers round one. Um, but yeah, definitely nothing to be ashamed of here. Yeah, if there's any team that you shouldn't underestimate when being in a comfortable position, then it is this team. Um, just for all the rule enjoyers, by the way, theoretically the survivors would be allowed to speed up the death now and if anyone Kobe's, they have to stay under the hook, not move at all, not attempting to escape, not using any perks um, and it would stay unpunished if they do so, but um, I can understand that a lot of players better don't take any risk in the Kobe role, so we'll just vibe here a little bit together with IPIC while congratulating him on a good uh, trial. And maybe we can already pull up our analyst rats. Rats, when looking onto the upcoming... R R rats has had enough of that game. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't want anything more to do with it. He's watching it. Um, fair enough for us. Fair enough. I mean, we can we, we can look on the on the perks, I guess. I was just confused because I thought someone disconnected. I was afraid. Okay. Um, so, Raz, when we are looking uh, onto the upcoming trial here, and you are now in such a difficult spot, the first set being gone in a very dominant performance here, sinners coming out on the nurse. As survivors straight again, things fell a little bit apart, things were chaotic. How do you prepare on your survivor side for that upcoming set? I think uh, they just have to do a mental reset here. First got a set is gone. It, it looked a lot worse than it actually was. Like, sure, they've gotten forked on two generators here, but like, the reason for that was because they went for things that, you know, the flash had saved with the life there at the end. I mean, they just tried to do something, make something work, and just pay for the win come, which is uh, absolutely fine there. Um, like, it looked a lot worse than it actually was, the result. But I think Nurse is a definitely a set they're comfortable on. They've picked that in the past already in this tournament already. And even though this is an uh, Ionix pick, I think they can definitely take that from them. And they, all they have, really have to do is just, like, do a mental reset and go again. Also, I'm sorry that I just disconnected there, like I just wanted to show the perks before going into the campfire chat, because otherwise you won't get to see them. Um, yeah, very understandable. I was just, I, I just thought that I picked this good I was afraid that we face any difficult case here, but but yeah, um, was I also realized that I talked about the win condition and set one it's a it's that a difficult <laughs> maybe yeah maybe maybe we should circle back a little bit before people say um 
is he mentally okay? <laughs> um, so today is actually a really uh, difficult uh, day for us. You see it in the in the chat, right? We are a little bit understaffed today. It, happens from time to time. Um, just a quick shout out real quick to the team that we do have on the table today for doing such an amazing work. Um, we always say so casually thank you at the end of the stream and we always appreciate at the end of the stream when everything has worked out. But I feel like it is a good moment right now to be very honest and, and say we are a little bit struggling today because we are understaffed in a volunteer-based org, but the people that are here today Let's name them Rats, Bradstick Boy, Carrie, Cole, Lee Young, Roxana, Parallax, Savannah, and our Twitch moderators. They are doing a fantastic job. And I feel like even though we are honestly struggling a little bit in the background, we are going through quite smooth. The workload is definitely high. That's why I called out the wind condition there because I'm on two, three other things uh, next to the casting in my mind at the moment. But I feel like. Um, I feel like I just wanted to give a shout out to the team. Um, oh, we got in, in the background. We got to give a shout out to our humble Direwolf as well. We didn't mention his own name, and you know, puts everything on so much organization um, and it's the leadership role. So I know you won't mention it, but I want to give a shout out to Direwolf as well. Um, and then you. I also, <laughs> I also want to. Um, <laughs> Or yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to myself. I am fantastic. Uh, no. um, we got Nurse. We got Nurse coming up. Uh, unless you had anything else to say. Yeah. Uh, um, no, no. Got, no, no. Go ahead. We got Nurse coming up, um, which, despite anything that's gone on before, because Nurse is so oppressive, which is a word I've said definitely too many times today, I'm going to have to go onto Soros.com. Uh, she's so oppressive. Anything can happen, right? You can you can suddenly get a snowball with four gens to go. You can eat. We've seen quite a few times in DVD League survivors actually getting a few out through the door um, with quite a few stages on them. Mm -hmm. It's so back and forth. Nothing is decided. I know she's an amazing killer. Many argue the best in the game. Um, I would as well. Uh, just to point that out. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything anything can happen. She's a tier one killer. Our survivors are stacked with really really good perks. I mean, this could go both ways. Yeah, Nurse has a very in intense and interesting history in CompDVD, right? Like, uh, for a while, we had her on the biggest maps. Then she was put onto Coal Tower. And at the very beginning, people said, how can you put the Nurse onto Coal Tower? Are you crazy? How is that supposed to work? But teams very quickly got used to it, scrimmed, practiced, and... Nurse was facing a couple of outs, a couple of ex uh, escapes, and a couple of difficult times on the coal tower even. And now uh, she's in a in a much more interesting spot again because um, teams have really learned to play in high intense situation and really optimizing every single second of the gameplay. You might say sometimes, yeah, okay, someone is going into the comp corner. What does it, does it really matter? And the answer is, mm -hmm. yeah, it does. We have seen it earlier, the pain rest hook that came in one second before the generator has been done. Imagine you're not going down in the comp corner and you have this second against you. So every single second counts team have been really optimizing the gameplay towards it and especially looking onto yonix these people are constantly um constantly optimizing the gameplay and they are around in the scene for years so i feel like we have a very very tough uh survivor team ahead of us there um on the nurse side on the other hand sinners they can even escape when they face a disconnect. So I really hope that they are starting off strong, coordinated. And then I feel like this could be their chance to make a turnaround in this best of three here. Yeah, I think, uh, as we're saying, nothing nothing is impossible. Um, anything can happen. And I think what you're mentioning about Comp Corner and all the little strategies um, that happen are even more, like, they're so effective against Nurse. Like, you see them against other killers as well. But against Nurse, who's just a killer that goes from chase to chase to chase um you could argue blight is better at defending three gens than nurse um taking these extra seconds for that for that delayed pain res so she doesn't have the freedom to choose which which hook she wants to go to she's having to travel from the edge of the map it takes her time agitation is banned on nurse um so many fine details matter so 
experience is really going to help Eonix here. But at the same time, if Sinners can find that kind of magic dust um, that's going to get them over the edge, they can take it to Wesker and they'll be riding on such a high going into that. We could get a really good best of three. But that would, that, that's a potential outline out of the calculated futures. Right now, we got Sweet Child. Gustavo, we got Bucky, we Jason against the nurse. How can they do it on Groaning Storehouse version 2? And unfortunately, Gustavo not going to get away with this little crouching here behind the box. That's going to be immediately the first chase, but rotating back towards the midsection here. Nothing is going to chase Wee Jason. They had a couple of chases in the previous trial with him. He was showing confident looping, and unfortunately, it's going to be a very quick injury right here. Going towards this shack, trying to pull the nurse as far away as possible from the generators but being so outsourced also means that you are going to face a quick down that's going to be teaming up on one generator and the other one a little bit also they are actually doing the main generator a very important part here as it can be connected to a couple of other generators for a strong setup bucky already setting up early anticipating that the nurse is carrying them closer towards the main building seems like sinners has a plan here yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good play from Bucky, right? Because the nurse can just appear in front of you at any given moment. You don't know when she's going to come. Um, so anticipating her early, getting out of there so she has nothing to pursue her chases with. So she can't keep up that high intensity that she's so feared for. It's why she's so good. Um, so Bucky doing a good job here, just stealthing around. And the nurse seems to have spotted him for now. So now he has to spring into action, get the save onto Ada. So we'll have overcome off this hit. We should be able to get some good distance. But I wouldn't be surprised here if our nurse goes for the ton out on Wee Jason. That's exactly what we're seeing. But it's the player that they would have wanted, right? They've got DS, they've got Lucky Break. They're equipped for this eventuality. Absolutely, yeah, they are very, very well prepared here. Dying Light going to kick in a little bit, but so far it's important that Jason is going on a longer chase here. We can see the decisive strike being there, but it's not going to be needed just yet as we are escaping. The nurse using this rock beautifully oh, to break thing. line of sight, and our killer is go. He actually lost him. I thought he's rotating towards the other generators, but he actually tricked him. So many seconds being lost from the nurse here first generator being completed they can team up on another generator now because they got the time vault coming out that's locking the survivor in an animation for a little bit is the ds still coming in it should be enough time the answer is unfortunately no it's going to be the second home stage in exchange for the second gen and that is a strong start on a nurse set yeah really really good i mean we should mention as well, like, even if they just complete all generators and everyone dies, that's going to be such a good result against Nurse. It's so winnable uh, for your killer once you flip over after half time. Um, so any generator done is really, really treasured and valued. Um, so anytime they're going to get, they're going to they're going to complete another generator, especially from this point forward. Um, it's definitely something to be proud of. And a great chase there, with a useful party around the rock, disconnected it, made the nurse think they were looping the Philippella, but actually they went back towards Jack and able to gain some distance. Unfortunately not to be able to use their DS, I think it had just run out of time. Um, but sorry, it's an undetectable add-on, really caught me off guard there. I wonder why we didn't have any chase music. It's the undetectable add-on you get after making successful blink contact. Um, and the tunnel out for Wee Jason, who has their DS, which the nurse might not be. Now the next one coming out, DS, where is Q? Because he slaps him with the D and not with the P. It seems like he's holding W and he's trying to get in there, but unfortunately not going to help. That's going to be a very quick down once again onto Jason. And we are saying goodbye, but definitely a very meaningful player in this trial. He has shown great chases and taken time from nothing here. So hopefully they they can profit and benefit from it onto the generator. Oh, and that generator just pops. It's everything we've been saying, Dai. Every second matter. That DS is stalling out. It looked like they've had no value from it, but it means the nurse didn't get popped in time. And you know, pop does uh, its percentage of the current generator progress. So it would have done a huge amount of damage onto that generator. Um, and so yeah, those seconds are so vital. Going down into comp corner now as well. No agitation on our nurse. She might just rotate back and she is. And this is generator number four. Yeah, you have a slug on the ground, but the survivor team is absolutely great. Ooh, what? On the way, 
Endgame with three stages. We talked about it. Never underestimate sinners, and this is exactly why. I mean, I, I can't even say nothing has made any like, really bad plays or any blunders. It's just been clinical from the survivor side. Gustavo uses life, goes through Shaq and has some good distance here. Should be able to stall this one out. And they should be thinking about the pickup onto Sweet Child here. This is unbelievable from Sinners. The Firecracker makes the nurse lose them again. And oh, flicks all the way through, just gets hit. As she flicks around, applies the mangle status effect. But they should be getting out two out through the door here. Now a little bit of hiding by Gustavo here, trying to trick the nurse. We child being picked up. We have three survivors back, but Gustavo being put down quickly. We can tell there is pressure onto the shoulders of nothing. Six stages on two survivors would be a very, let's say, uncomfortable result onto a nurse set here. So you really want to get a third survivor bumping it up to nine because six stages on three survivors win con would be so difficult. We do see someone hopping into the locker here to force the grab, I believe, to waste more Head time. On. Yeah, that's going to be the, uh, that's going to be Bucky in the locker hiding there. So nothing is forced to go for the grab here, losing some additional seconds. Gustavo and Sweet Child rotating back towards the track and towards the exit gate. I'm positive that they will get the out here. But they just started. Nee, that is going to be enough. That actually is six stages ago. He's seen the deliverance. He, he, he has deliverance, so we could wow. get a big play here. If he runs towards Shaq, I'm, I'm so lost on this version of Groening Storehouse. I don't know where Shaq is, but he's still got his endurance, which his nurse can't swing yet. Um, the other survivors seem to be staying in, though, so it looks like he's just delaying the inevitable. Um, but it didn't really matter which survivor got found there. The other two were all still fresh. Yeah, six stages, two fresh hooks. A fantastic result for Sinners. Wow, insane try here with the deliverance as well. We now even have to say nothing. A little bit lucky almost that he got away with the six stages here because Sinners had even more in mind. But six stages on two survivors is such a luxury win condition here. That puts so much pressure back on the survivor team of Ionix. They cannot go down too early at the beginning. They cannot allow any form of mistake and they need to smash the generators like never before. Rats, our wonderful analyst here. When we are looking onto the survivor team of Ionix, well, not going down early against the nurse is quite difficult. It's very easy to say, very difficult to execute. Do you think we might see something crazy like hiding out a corrupt intervention or anything like that? I think it's going to be tough. No matter what the play here is, he, he, he's going thinking. To be. He's thinking. Oh, I'm muted again. Oh, Sorry, I'm muted, muted again. On on, yeah, I'm muted on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it's going to be definitely a really tough uh, order. I think. Especially like we have this locking mechanism, right, for the loadouts. As much as that helps to negate the fact that you may bring other perks that you wouldn't bring otherwise. Nurse is a very different killer where you are kind of like limited in what you can bring. And it's much more what you need to get. And knowing that you need to get six, or it's no, uh, no, sorry, now seven stages as a win condition of th six stages with three freshers. It's kind of like, you don't even need to commit for a tunnel out. You could just camp somebody to second or take the trade in that regard and then pressure people off gens, get the free pop values and get the stages that way. Or you play the original way of trying to get the tunnel out as soon as possible, but that might get you punished. Um, I think either Ionix is just going to give this up and make a good showing with the trying to go do a good performance here as a, in general, or they're going to go for a lot of high risk, high rewards kind of strategies like pallet saves, flashlight saves and maybe as you mentioned stealthing out corrupt but I don't think stealthing out corrupt is really the play since the uh, killer pretty much knows where the survivor will spawn. Um, if you have scrimmed this map often enough you'll realize that the spawns are very consistent usually like I, I would say like 70% of the time you will spawn on the corner to the back of main in that corner simply because of these ad uh, offerings that the soils are forced to bring the shot of binding and the vigos uh, shot uh, sometimes the soils may spawn shack or in the other pocket towards um uh, between the shack and the water tower in that pocket 
but you will realize as killer where they spawn simply because you will spawn on the other side of the map, right? So based on that, stealthing out corrupt with these offerings is really difficult and also really risky because if you do get found, um, you're gonna get probably M1 tagged and then blinked up on or found in the locker, so I don't think that's necessarily the play. However, what I do think we will see is uh, some pilot saves, potentially. So that's like the counterplay that, sorry, Eonix could um, could bring in. Just quickly talking about the game that just went on, why do you think it was that Eonix didn't have quite the performance they wanted on Killer as Nurse? Was it down to the Survivors of Sinners? Um, which it kind of felt like from our end, or was there really yeah. some errors that Nurse you think made in that game? Uh, I mean, Eonix play, uh, sorry, um, Sinners played a Nothing. very aggressive playstyle here with the, um, like, the, the way they didn't even give me much hook time. Like, they chose to, you can have two options if you play against Nurse. It's either you give as much hook time as possible and trade last second before the next stage proce uh, proceeds to give, get as many generators done for it, or you just say, <laughs> We don't care, we want to play around that pop goes the weasel, avoid eating that on a generator and get safe beforehand to guarantee longer chase time simply because you have more distance to work with. And they played a very aggressive playstyle, even saving the decipher strike for the second chase after the turn out happens uh, on, on the second uh, hook stage and trying to buy as much time as possible that way. And through the chases they've been really uh, showing of that they are capable of getting the chases you need against um, nurses to get the gens done and not necessarily like the hook time and good death locations. They still died in good locations considering the generators they were working on, of course. Um, but the hook time definitely wasn't in there, but the chase times were up for, uh, made up for it. So very aggressive, um, but they got rewarded for it. So it worked out for them. David, aggression, which you've got to like give more compliments to them, but given the fact of how kind of like badly the pinhead set went for them, to have that confidence to go in there, it's our theme of the day, Dyer. Confidence equaling aggression, equaling success. I mean, we saw it with Torment, and now we're seeing it a little bit with Sinners, and it's very likely that we could go to a game three, Dyer. Yeah, mindset and the psychology behind it is so important. Uh, even team chemistry is very important. It was underestimated in competitive DBD for quite a while. We have seen it when, uh, like one, one and a half years ago, when a lot of teams were rising and shining for one or two tournaments because rosters were randomly thrown together and people were like, well, this is a strong uh, player and chase. This is a strong one. This is a strong one. And none of these teams were really um, successful because after one or two tournaments, two or three challenges in the way, it turned out the team chemistry and being able, Rats mentioned it earlier, this mental reset in a break is a core skill your team needs to have. When you are losing the first set to a dominant performance, you need to be able to forget about it, reset and maintain positive energy. Otherwise, you will not uh, come together. Now, Sinners is a roster that is together for a long time they are playing so many tournaments together they know each other so well and this is what caused this energy boost going into the second trial and being such a coordinated team and we have really seen how oppressive this can be even to a killer like nurse so we can only hope for ionix that they pull the same and even then six stages or staying on the six stages is going to be one hell of a challenge <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, we're giving them a lot of praise, but now it's up to them to be clinical yeah. in the execution. They need to take this one to a game three. They cannot afford to drop the ball now, otherwise they'll be out of the winter circuit. Spikes from the shadow is an interesting part to maybe stop them. Well, <laughs> it gets submitted in, but it will stop them from really stealthing out this corrupt. And he seems to have found someone already. I believe it's Ipek. A phenom on the chase gets another bit of value from Spikes from the shadows. Goes towards this corrupt generation instead. Now we see a whiff coming out onto this survivor right here. Phenom really needs a good early game pressure as early as possible, injuries as early as possible, but gets confused over the location of the survivor. And this is the opposite from a good early game. That means that you're giving wiggle room and freedom towards these survivors. Has to rotate entirely as Swatter is nowhere to be found. 
now finds their eyes here on the main building. Life is going to be in play here, potentially being used on a nearby window that the main building always offers. But if their eyes is going to have a little bit of a longer chase here as well, then it's going to be rough for Phantom. It is, but I think the good thing is, is because the survivors were playing so stealthy, as um, we were seeing from my excellent producer, there wasn't too much gem progress done straight away, so it couldn't be a massive snowball. And I think although this chase was slightly long, it's not going to be as punishing as we would normally see, because there was a lot of stealthy behaviour from our gameplay. Steve hasn't touched a gen yet. Yeah, that is the difficult balance to find now. When to progress the generators here especially when they are helping each other or kind of being in the same location we do see ipic rotating over towards the main building taking over the work there but we do see the killer rotating the same way expecting that Ionix will try and exchange these survivors hiding behind that box next to the generator is not going to work out even though it would be very amazing to achieve a little bit of an assistance here by the perks great patience by and I'm not going for the first swing, going for a second teleport here after Ipic has dropped the pallet. And that's going to be a quick second hook stage. Five gen standing, seven uh, hook stages needed. Looks very good so far. Yeah, it does look good. And the chase is um, the last two ones we just saw um, have been clinical in closing them down. Had a little bit rough start finding survivors early, but it's been pretty good from this point now. Now we also have pop to play with. One generator gets done, but we can pop the next gen with the most progress. And Spies from the Shadow, as we see, it seems a little bit stealthy from our survivors, will definitely help us out a little bit. And I wonder if the survivors expect Spies from the Shadows at all. And we'll start to presume that their stealth gameplay isn't going to be as effective as they would hope. Now we see a little bit of a basement hiding here. Swatter stealthing as well. They they do spend a lot of time on finding the perfect timing and the perfect positioning. And usually I would say that is very great to see because this is what you need against the nurse. The only problem is the context and the context is the win condition that they can maximum allow six stages on three survivors or seven stages uh, after two eliminations. And considering that, I'm a little bit worried about their inefficiency. Yeah, they, they seem to not be doing gents at all. Swatter really, really wants this sprint bus, but the teammate goes second. Uh, he, sorry, he wants this deliverance value. The teammate goes second, though, and he spent all that time just sitting around next to the hook. He is going to get it. He is going to get his deliverance. Will make it as well, can be applied. But yeah, there's barely any gen progress. And when you've got a win condition of six stages um, to match against the nurse, this is a really, really interesting um, game plan style we're seeing here from the Onyx. But they're the experienced survivors. I wonder how this is going to work. Absolutely. And now we see the next edge map chase here that is usually allowing more pressure on the generators but as we mentioned it might be a little bit too late here this is going to be hook stage number four so more than half time already Sasura going to be thrown onto the hook here and immediately blinking back towards the generators in the midsection two minutes of hang time until we would face these elimination onto him there is also taking an injury as well second generator being completed pop goes to weasel not even being needed here because phantom knows that the generator pressure is not enough right now to be uh, to cause any further worries slug next to the hooked survivor they are rotating they are busy in keeping up with the pressure here so phantom i think starts to realize that he has a very realistic chance of pushing us into the tiebreaker I mean, yeah, we're just one hook away, right? Because I think this will be the third fresh. I could be corrected, and I could definitely be wrong on that. Um, yeah, that is the third fresh. So they're just one stage away now from pushing us into the third set. And it's a completely different game style and game plan from our survivors. It's been so, so passive, which is definitely what I was not expecting, given the win condition they're playing for. Um, Sinus was so, so aggressive. The dead hard gets weighted out slightly as Nurse. I was a little bit unsure where I think was, but it works out for them well. And I mean, this should be the game all wraps. But it's, yeah, interesting to see them go for this passive, um, passive play style, given the how tough their win condition was. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you have to pull something crazy. You have to pull something risky. One option we mentioned was hiding out corrupt and being one of these 
old legendary uh, comp gamers or going for something like pallet saves and I feel like we've seen the opposite by Yonix here. We have seen a very slow approach that was really about positioning and really about striking in the correct moment and as you pointed out earlier, I really feel like this was not the game plan to take here because being slow always equals in more time for the killer to take the necessary stages and you can see Phantom is profiting from it so well. He has multiple slugs every time. They are constantly yeah. rotating around just yeah. to pick each other up and now it is definitely confirmed this is from stage number 7. So we are going into the tiebreaker set between Ionix and Sinus here and now it's very open who's taking the win here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm still so baffled on like the game plan approach from the Onyx here. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, I mean, even Darius on the hook, and maybe they felt like they'd already lost it, but he was allowed to die, which was a definite, you know, loss because it, it was felt like Eonix didn't know what win condition they were playing for. They were just playing their normal nurse game and not really adapting to the circumstance presented towards them. But I could be being harsh on these survivors. It's a lot more difficult when you're on the stage and when you're back here just shouting at them for running around in circles. Um, <laughs> they're going to be taking us to a game three on a West cassette, which is always interesting, uh, but a really, really good bounce back for Sinners. Clinical from Phenom, who takes down I pick again. We could see a pallet save here. A little bit too late, though, I think. A little bit too late, but still, for the mindset showing Phenom, well, you might have taken this set point, but we still have some good game plans in the back pocket. This is still a little bit like a signal, might bump up your survivor mindset a little bit for the upcoming set, because keep in mind, Ionix is going to stay on the survivor side for the tiebreaker here. So if they finish off nicely, they might really profit from it. But I pick being thrown back onto the ground with two confident blinks here. This time there won't be any pallet, but still we are going to see Steve enjoying his flashlight a little bit. Now, we'll be interesting to see if we actually reach endgame here because for Phantom it would be a great achievement to even deny Ionix the final generator. Yeah, a really big consequence that even if they are, uh, don't end up being our Wesker player in the final set, just going forwards, if um, Sin has managed to make this upset, uh, have managed to complete this fairy tale and make the upset happen, um, it'll be great going into future games and future sets against tough and maybe arguably even tougher opponents um, depending on how far they make it so yeah definitely want to close this out in style and if anything put Eonic survivors in a worse mindset and make them more frustrated and more angry at each other and make that VC a typical DVD toxic VC <laughs> yeah, they, uh, that's the base definition of a DVD VC isn't it now Swatter also hugging it very tight here, being able to make sure that the distance is being kept and no uh, hit into the back can happen here. Now Phantom definitely losing a little bit of time here. If Sasuo was spending it all the time onto a generator, then they might go into the end game here still. It is very rough to go for an escape, but we do see it's 60% round about that mark and now he's going to hide a hatch escape. Wouldn't change the result. But a hatch escape would be one hell of stylish, that's for sure. Yeah, but they can they can add a little bit of style points. Unfortunately, it's not one of our win conditions. It's not one of the three things you see at the top of the screen. Um, there isn't. We maybe we could add that. Maybe for a future tournament, we can add a little extra bracket if. They draw on gens, if they draw on hooks, they draw on fresh hooks. We could have another bracket for style points. Is that is, is that a good idea yeah. from Karen McBarry? Yeah? Yeah, I think so. 360s, flashlight saves, we should... Uh, we should just rank it, you know, like these dance competitions where the judges are holding up their marking afterwards. <laughs> so, something like this would be very needed here. But um, Swat are actually doing a good job here as well. We've seen him in multiple chases. We have seen him multiple times taking kind of the pressure in the right moment, really finding a good balance when to hide and when staying careful. And then when rotating back towards the generator, taking pressure. So Yonix even now shows us this great micromanagement on their game decisions. And this is making me confident that they will put up a great show in the tiebreaker, even though they might unexpectedly lost the nurse here. No, definitely. They're, they are going to put up a fight and they wouldn't be the team they were if they weren't able to turn things around from a performance like this in one of the sets. I mean, we saw Sinners do it, um, but this is Team Ionix who had such a good run. I've said it so many times. Their All Hallows League run was just so, so impressive. To win that many sets back to back, 
every time having your life on the line and they beat so many good teams made it all the way to losers finals um really really impressive so this is a team that is not going to give up because they lose one bad nurse set. i mean it's a nurse anything can happen um they're going to be coming out swinging into the west set, um, and we're definitely in for a treat once we get to that it's going to be swatter as our last survivor is going to be going down momentarily yeah, this is a this is a good thing to point out, and this is important for this mental reset you need now in the upcoming break before going into the tiebreaker set, right? If you remember that on a nurse set everything is possible, and that losing it is not necessarily meaning that you got dominated. It doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong in your team chemistry. It means that something wild happened. A nurse is a killer where everything is possible. I think this would be something that Eonix really needs. Maybe you want to join the team you see and play psychologist real quick and give them this motivational fact on the way. But um, Mastermind, one of the most laughed killers in competitive DVD, I feel like, from the player side on their pick rate to the viewers being hyped about it. Now we have him on tiebreaker on top. Rats, when we look into the upcoming set, Ionic staying on the survivor side after facing a rough nurse game. Do you feel like they need to optimize anything on the survivor side or should they try again with their micromanagement because Mastermind potentially being a little bit weaker, there they will be fine. I think they're fine right now the way they not that not how they have to play it. Obviously, Mastermind requires a very much different skill set than you need to play against the nurse, right? You don't want to be playing this slowly against the Mastermind that you do against the nurse because a nurse is more about dying in the right spots and then settling up for the hook saves in the right positions, stealthing, avoiding, avoid giving the information to the killer always at all times if you can. And against the against the Mastermind, it's more much more chase orientated. You need to. Not only die in the right positions, but also chase in the right positions. You want to keep up the chase for as long as possible, even though it's a very high ping matchup. Um, but the way that they that Ionix has played the nurse set shows to me that they are still capable and didn't fall apart after their nurse has only gotten six stages. You could argue that when your killer gets such a, I'm gonna say, bad result that your survival performance may suffer from it, but the way that they've played the nurse set, even though it was a 4k on zero generators remaining, the way that they've played it was very, like, small, uh, small, uh, how do you say, very... Uh, sort of slow pace. Slow pace, thank you. Very slow yeah. pace and very coordinated and just sticking to their game plan. As um, Kerry has said it, they've, they haven't played any anything like very risky or like try to actually achieve the win con they've just played their game out the way that they would have played it anyways right mm. um because i guess they've um said okay we're gonna lose this nurse set but we're gonna stay put together we're gonna make sure that we play together as a team and that shows to me that they are preparing themselves already for the third set now for the tiebreaker um on the mastermind i just want to mention which is very interesting to me is that each team has won the opponent's pick, by the way. So Sinus has picked Xenobite and Ionix won it, and Ionix has picked Nurse and Sinus won it. Which is very interesting, and it goes to show that... I mean, on the Mastermind set, everything can happen, as it can still go by both ways here. <laughs> and, oh, I think it's also to add on to that is... So they've won each other's set, um, killer picks, but also, it's not been like close. Like both games have kind of been a disaster for one team and a beautiful performance by the other team. Um, so they've both, you know, gone the other way, but massively landslided in one direction as opposed to the other. Um, but we're looking to almost hop into this West Cassette. So going forwards uh, into it, Rats, there are lots and lots of add ons you can run as Wesker. There are lots of different play styles. Having seen what you've seen from both these teams, what would be be expecting um from <laughs> from sinners who are up first on wesker um now for, for add-on wise uh, i think it's very common right now that you see the egg and the loose crank which are currently objectively speaking the best add-on for wesker that they're in the game however i wouldn't be surprised if we see some other picks simply because of confidence right 
For example, a lot of people still use the brown add-on that makes the initial bound distance a bit longer just because they're used to it now and they want to play with it. It's not a bad add-on, it's just if they're used to it then might as well run that instead. Maybe we see some off-meta picks like the beetle to decrease the throw distance, throwing people into the edge of the map. You can also see, I mean, completely other add-ons. I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring. But also perk-wise, I honestly have not seen any mastermind picks played on ping, especially on ping, it sounds stupid, but like it's, those killers are played very differently. And if you play on your like 30 ms average game, then the chases are expected to be long, even though it's a chase killer and you're expected to perform well and you can't play the pallets relatively well. But on ping it's kind of like you have to read what the opponent does, you have to pre-throw or just guess that you don't throw the pallet at all, greet it. And that makes it very interesting, and I'm also interested to see how the Mastermind's ability is going to be used here. If they're going to try and outplay a lot of the seemingly safe pallets, which might not be safe anymore, or if they're just going to say, play it safe, break it, and use the Brutal Strength, for example. Alright then, well let's see if any of that comes to be. We are hopping into it. We've got Ipic. Uh, Sasua, Derice, and Swatter are four survivors. They're gonna try and perform, well, a little bit better than we saw in the nurse set. It's definitely very capable. And Wesker is in straight, in, in chase straight away, though. Absolutely, first chase starting very early, always what you're looking for, especially when you're not a teleportation killer. And we do see a nice rotation here, immediate use of the life, not keeping it for later. We'll reach back towards this pallet here and so far outplaying the mastermind in a very beautiful way here. Half of a minute being wasted just yeah. by this tile so far, trying to fake the vault but uh, this time not going to get away with that. We do see a little bit of luck to break action here, but unfortunately line of sight being there, and that's a very wonderful second hit onto the survivor here. Therefore, um, going to be a little bit of a balance, I would say. First hit very well played by the survivors, uh, by the ki uh, survivors, yeah, and second hit very well done by the killer. So it uh, seems like we have a very good um, game on our hands. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is always going to be good. And the add-ons I want to just talk about as well. So we do see the add-on, but we also see the tendril, um, which I believe increases your movement speed while you're charging your bound um, by 5%. So a little bonus there for him. But the egg is the important one, right? It gives you an extra second while you're waiting here in this phase, as we can see on our screen. Um, and it also gives you a little speed curve, thanks to an intended feature from Behaviour. Not an intended feature by behavior, <laughs> and we are on the wrong server, it seems like. Not entirely sure. Our staff team is checking it in the background. There is a bug in DVD at the moment that sometimes the lobby is not being hosted on the server of the killer, and it switches towards the survivor side. So let's see how that is going to be decided in the background. Kerry, you will need to take over for a moment. No worries, I'm more than happy to take over with this one. We've got someone around the edge of the map. Yeah, We've got a chase all the way into the Shaq right now. We won't go too deep into what's going to be happening in the future of the game right now because we could very well be handling with a restart that is getting sorted out in the background. But in the meantime, it is we, Jason, taking the chase in towards seven, in towards this truck area. And I wonder if he's going to stick here or respect the fact that Derice is a fantastic player. No, he's going to go for it. He takes it around this one, and we're heading for a really, really long chase. Breaks the pallet and allows Derice to get to the center of the map pretty quickly. So an interesting choice there, and looks down for a second, and yes, we are going to get the restart. And yeah. Direwolf, I'd be correct in saying there is no penalty for either team. Absolutely, yeah, it's a bug in the game. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what's supposed to be, the killer sets up the lobby, and the killer will be also the host and therefore we should be on the service of the killer player uh, this is because otherwise it gets very problematic for the killer a lot of interactions aiming using the power etc will just be horrendous if you play from south america and you're on an eu server and your killer has 200 ping every usage of the power every dash everything is just going to feel clunky delayed and just not on point it's a lot of luck so um that's why the survivors have to take the 
suffer, we could say, from the ping, and it applies both ways. And in this case, unfortunately, we were on the EU server, which is not supposed to happen. It's a known bug into the game, so we are going to um, so we are just going to see a no fault restart, no penalties. Uh, everyone is allowed to take new builds, so they can switch it around as long as they lock it in properly beforehand. Again, um, I would say this is actually a perfect moment for a break, so we will sort this out, ladies and gentlemen, but don't run away. It's a simple restart, so we'll see you in a moment. <laughs> Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. We are entering the tiebreaker set with a high adrenaline, but we, Jason, <laughs> will have an iron will to come out of the winner here. Is he, is the mastermind his object of obsession? That's the question here, but he definitely practiced it very well. Let's see. I, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but. That was, that was absolutely ever. phenomenal. <laughs> so I tried and <laughs> Swatter facing a very quick injury once again here, way sooner than the previous trial. So hopefully being able to delay it, but no, that's going to be a very quick down. I mean, that was just an explosion from the Wesker. I mean, you could say an eruption after the corruption that happened with the um, servers not... I, I could only do two. I, I tried. I can't live up to your expectations. Anyway, there's someone on the hook. We've got five generators to go. The builds have been switched around. We've got the Unicorn Medallion now instead of the Tendril, which increases your first bound by 20% and then decreases the second one by 20%. A pretty nice add-on when playing around tiles. Let's see if he can use that effectively, just as he did against the Steve. We found a Jake. <laughs> The Jake and Jake finds a very quick injury here as well. Spotter still on the hook now, being rescued eventually. And your firecracker being dropped, but that's going to be a very quick one as well. So much is happening. Chaos uh, coming a little bit onto Ionix gameplay here. They better going to find a good solution. They better keep an eye on to It will be very busy now dealing with all these injuries. I, I thought maybe the break would have like lowered the mood a little bit on the Sinners camp. You know, they had momentum and it might have broken that stride they had going a little bit but we jason has just come in and is just slamming survivors left right and center all over the map he is ready for war and he's bringing it to yonix i mean this is, this is a lot of damage a lot of stages for five generators and i want to point out again this could be sinners eliminating eonix from the winter circuit if he's able to keep up this pressure let's see what eonix yeah. can do about it yeah, that would be just insane. And we, Jason, is absolutely popping off right now, showing the entirety of his <laughs> skill and experience on the killer side. Sasua very likely going into the second stage here. Then you already have one survivor that can potentially be eliminated just on five generators already. This is such a great start for Jason here. Definitely playing on your home servers uh, is going to change a lot, it seems like. <laughs> the difference is night and day. I don't know if it's all to do with the servers, but it uh, clearly has helped. And just that home boost, right? It's like a football game when you're playing at your home crowd. You've got everyone cheering for you. The Dead by Daylight server is cheering for Wee Jason as he takes uh, a little bit of pressure towards Seven. And he might actually look out just to completely eliminate Sasua here. Crazy gameplay so far. We do see the survivor team holding a little bit against it with generator pressure. There's number one. We saw a second one on the 70% mark. So most likely the punishment for Jason will be two generators, but I feel like he can live with that. If that means that the survivor team is cut down by one individual player, you really take two generators as an exchange here. And it seems like that is exactly going to happen. Sasua being eliminated for generators is still standing and if he keeps the speed of downing an injury uh, injuring the survivors then he will go for even more here 
Yeah, and this is gonna this is gonna make Eonix reconsider what they're playing for here now because this is a fantastic start for we Jason for sinners. They've got to think about okay, we're not gonna get the best result from this game. How much damage can we do? Can we limit it so maybe we can attempt to restart at this set? You know, if they can get another three generators done, they might be pretty happy with that given the start that we Jason has put on for them because there is Derice going down again, getting put on top of the hill. If this is another pain res, it could stop that fourth generator from going. No, it's not a pain res. He has pop goes the weasel and it's not gonna be in time for the deep three gen. Yeah, something I noticed about Sinners is that they are staying away from pain res in the third builds. They are kinda, we could say, the conservative gamers that are using the good old pop goes the weasel and applying the pressure like that remind me to ask rats about that later on but like this is something i noticed in the perk builds of sinners here they are uh, kind of keeping what they are used to we could say the definite working base kit and uh, Swatter dropping the pallet early here, really granting himself safety. We do see that they were potentially on the way to go for a reset here, being interrupted as Jason rotates now. So just in time, Pop goes to Weasel. Great coordination and organization by Jason here. But will be interesting to see if they go for a full reset here, if they have the time for that. I mean, I, I want to say, deep. Double Daylight Games, they're a marathon, not a sprint. They might not be the longest game in the world compared to, I don't know, your Counter-Strikes or your Valorant, but he's had a great first half. He needs to be able to keep this up now because Eonix will punish him if he lets the ball slip. If he has too long a chase, they're going to get a couple gens done, and that could, you know, that's our primary win condition. That could really turn the table, so he needs to be clinical here in this chase against Swatter. Can he keep up the momentum? Loses that 50-50 there, and it's really good play from Swatter on high ping to prolong the this pallet for this amount of time he loses this one and now gets the elbow this is exactly what we were saying can't happen with we jason he can't afford these really really long chases but does eventually win the mind game gets down swatter eruption goes off and he should get a pain res now i'll see you he dead. should yeah that would be really needed for himself let's see and on top, the pop goes to Weasel, always in the back pocket here. Ooh, that nice. is going to be a lot of regression coming in, but let's see if it's going to work out. Luckily, yes, but I do think the wiggle meter was minimum on 90% right there. Let's see, six stages so far, three generators remaining, two survivors standing besides the hooked survivor, one of them not hooked at all. Rough, because none of them is working on the generators right now. Their eyes is also being located here, thrown into the pallet he had time to drop before. This is very interesting what, what's happening there. I, I have no idea how that one worked out. We need some expert physicists for that one. Uh, the end result, though, is a trade on the hook for D-Rice. The two survivors were working on gems. We saw them stealthing about. The gem pressure wasn't really there. I mean, we genuinely could be looking at three generators remaining. I'm sure Eonix are going to crack another one. But uh, this is such a good performance from Wee Jason. Yeah, this is just crazy we can just say it home service is changing everything when you're playing on a good thing as killer you and nothing is delayed me. and clunky is you have, have a way better speed control speed. over what the mastermind is doing and especially when we have all these dashes then ping is a really really relevant factor here yeah. going on to the hook against water that means eliminated <laughs> as well two survivors standing one of them injured one of them still healthy what they could try now is to at least get a hatch escape the most important win condition are the generators but then somehow magically 4k on three gens as well and with the hatch escape pulling the difference there that would be one thing they can do or at least trying to go for the third generator here because i feel like just a 4k on two completed objectives will be one hell of a pain yeah, I mean, getting anything more from this game now is going to be a tall order for Yonix, but it's something they desperately need because, uh, you know what, this is, this is undefendable, uh, pretty much. I mean, it'd have to be an incredible performance um, from Ipek, who I presume <laughs> will be the Wesker for Team Yonix. But let's see what they can do, right? A long chase could possibly mean another generator gone. It's just unfortunate. That Gen at 7, the one by the long grey truck, um, was so far progressed, the pain res came in in just the nick of time. He really extended to get that hook. I couldn't believe he made that distance without the survivor wiggling off. That generator got completely regressed. So they've got to start again with this 2v1 situation to try and get one more gen done. And look at the eruption set up. Yeah, this is just really, really well done here by Jason. I think the survivor team 
going to hype him up as well in the VC, saying, Jason, do you realize how great you are playing right now and what of a great win condition you are preparing for us here? So, yeah, absolutely on point. We do see now that uh, we are rotating back between these two generators here. Eruption, as you mentioned. <laughs> great setup, Jason. Great pallets. Why would he worry about any pallets on the Wreckers Yard when casually playing such a great killer game here. We do have a fully infected Darius who's not taking care of it just yet because he's injured, so it doesn't really come in clutch here besides the hindered effect. IP going to sneak a little bit, so they might actually prepare for this game here, but IP has been low. I'm not sure if IP was actually detected there or if he bolted into the killer by assuming that he would. Nice mind game coming out as well. Really, really well done here. And uh, now it's going to be a big decision making. I don't think it makes sense to even start a generator here. So most likely we'll see an end game attempt and then next game 4k three gens and then make the difference in the win condition due to the hatch escape. But even that is denied because Jason is already over here. So he'll be actually green 4k carry on three gens remaining. I mean, hats off to Wee Jason. That was incredible. Against these four super experienced survivors, he just picked them apart. He made them look like amateurs. Three generators remaining. He gets the 4K. No chance of a hatch here from Ipic. This is definitely going to be 12 stages. Um, uh, just unbelievable. Wee Jason. I, 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 have, I have no other words to describe it. It's such, such a good performance. It's incredible. And... This is kind of what we have seen from Team Sinners last week. Yes, there was no disconnect, but we started with a difficult first set and we were very sure Ionix has taken the lead, Ionix has taken the dominance, Ionix will come in with confidence, Sinners has to prove it, and they did. In the nurse set already, we said don't underestimate them, they're coming out strong. And now, this is the peak of a recovery from, a, from being dominated in the first set. This is an absolute peak of dominating Ionic survivors. The entire best of three has flipped 180. And that's very crazy to mention here. And I think latest now, teams will be very aware that Sinus is a very dangerous opponent to face. I mean, yeah, not many teams can do this to Ionix. Uh, we, we, they're such a good team. I cannot believe what we're seeing. Um, and now as we are going to start setting up the final, well, potentially the final game of this best of three, uh, I want to bring in Rats and ask. So, um, Ionix, when they were... Um, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought. I'm just going to say it. How, how are Ionix going to play this one as killer? And how should the survivors of Sinners um, go for this? I mean, it's it's very tough. It's 4k3 as a win con. Uh, I know it's Ping and Ozma's mind, but that's that's really difficult. Uh, you have seen the very first game. Um, I know we were playing on the wrong service, but we have seen the very first game that something like this is possible if you have a really good early chase. Um, mm. I mean, it's possible to get a good result on survivor side, I guess. It's like kind of the other way around. Um, it is possible to run a mastermind, but on the same hand, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a tough order, like... You have to get those downs as soon as possible. And what I also need to say is... You kind of need 4 gen regression perks, right? If you... I don't know what li I pick locked in here as this build, but if you locked in, for example, like a brutal strength, as much as that is going to help you in the chase, I think you just need gen regression perks to... to assure that... you... If you get into a position to get this 4k3 generators to tie, that you get it. Which is going to be into a tough hour order. I also want to... Uh, yeah? Oh, I was just going to say, I can, I can hear from the way you say it. I completely agree. It's really, really tough for the killer to try and like work this one out on how they're going to do it. In terms of survivors, it should be an easy like clinical conversion. So they literally just need to let one person get chased, sit on three solar gens, let them die, and it should be GG. Or are there other things they need to be watching out for? I mean, there are obviously other things they need to be watching out for. If the first chase goes into the, all the open generators and interrupts multiple people, and maybe drops a few pallets without any value, like if you drop check and, and die on it, for example, and then get hooked basement whilst the corruptors 
basically give doing its fullest uh like all its work so having the first hook with no gender efficiency that could hurt really badly right so you want to you want to make sure that that doesn't happen but if the first chase goes into the edge of edges of the map towards the crop this this <laughs> towards the block generators <laughs> of the crop intervention um and you have the the rotations done like all around where everybody doesn't run into each other and gets on the generators far away from where the chase goes it's going to be a really tough set for the for ipic to to get here because well, hypothetically speaking you don't have the time i've said that last week as well on the wincon from ionix versus elysium on the ghost face set where Zaka had to fork here and three generators to tie on Ghostface. You don't have the wiggle room. You don't have the time for a tunnel out. You don't have the the time for a camp. We Jason did because he was in a position where he was shutting down all the generator efficiency with that with those quick chases in those areas that they happened. The Ionics lost a lot of gen efficiency uh, gen efficiency to pop interruptions. And then he had the time to trade two gens for a kill which if you know that what you have to play for you don't have that freedom of wiggle room that's mm. that I've, I'm, I'm trying to explain here also what i wanted to yeah. touch on was dyer asked and he should have reminded me about it about the preserve preserve play style of the pain resonance i just think honestly that they got really unlucky with the locations of the hooks you've seen it almost one time that one person almost wiggled off the shoulders of the killer, like we said, 90%. That was because he wanted to reach a painless hook. And in the entire area where all the first chases happened, there was no painless hook in the area. Which, And then the only that he, uh, hook that he had, he used painless hook, uh, painless on, and then killed the survivor on it, which then the hook is gone. So it's uh, like an unlucky placement from that from that perk. Yeah, um, no, I, I agree. I thought that might be the case um, when he was... <laughs> I mean, there's no real other reason for him to trech all the way across the map. Um, looks like we're going to be heading into it now. Um, so thank you for analysis, Rats. And Direwolf, to reflect on what Rats has just said, it's it's clearly, when you've got a tough win condition like this, it's such a negative as killer going second. Um, you know, because the first killer doesn't know what condition they're playing for. This killer does. I pick has to defend three generators. Well, two can allow two generators popping he can't allow any more than that um if you had to give odds on the chances of ionix pulling this one off uh what would you give it oh that's that's a tough question right? like even just using the words pulling it off mm. is in this context just so insane and so intense because we are talking about not letting go more than three generators on the side of the killer here uh, rats touched on it you don't have any time basically you need to basically load into the game with two survivors already been hooked <laughs> and still being on the hook and you know mention on seven generators for two minutes regardless of a down or seven. like it is Objectively speaking, absolutely impossible that IPIC is doing it. And yet, when we are talking about these killers here with this skill kit and their names and their experience, then still something crazy as this win condition becomes somewhat reasonable and somewhat expectable. <laughs> Uh, let's see if he can do that. Definitely getting a pallet out of the way that is uh, randomly laying around here on the on the Rackless yard. Maybe someone was actually loading in and preparing the map for IPIC a little bit. But so far, Survivor staying uh, hidden a little bit. 60 seconds, no injury going to happen. So Sinners definitely taking the start they need to finish it off. Yeah, I think we saw Ipic going a little bit aggressive. He need, he knows he needs to find something big to keep his team still in the winter circuit. I mean, we're on the brink of eliminating Eonix here. Such a sad exit for such a strong team. Um, they could be going home very, very early. Ipic, I mean, if there's anyone who's up for the task, it's definitely Ipic. He's been a phenomenal killer all day. We Jason weaving the killer. He was playing not uh, just a moment ago. Doesn't want to give up. Oh, um, I pick anything and decides to go around the edge of the map and die in the corner. Um, not the longest chase, but it's completely fine because they've got such a good wing con to play for. Yeah, this is fine. The first down is fine. The first hook will be fine. The first elimination will even still be fine. 
But uh, if they take it too light, then they might face a little bit of a challenge here. So I pick definitely happy about the first hook stage coming out so soon. 50% over here on this gen. Bucky going to wait a little bit in this um, tray. And 80% now on this gen right? So one very likely going to be completed. A second one with 50%. So still is doing their job half time on the win condition very soon uh i pick better getting a couple of downs here yeah he needs to come out super fast oh that could have been a that could have been huge if he got around there to body block the shack pallet in time that could have been the blunder from the survivor side that i pick needed but it was not meant to be today we jason gets away gets the uh, sprint burst effectively uh, from the endurance hit uh, and now has this to play with as well they'll have the exhaustion perk to use um, they can make it safely to this tile and that other gen should almost be ready to pop maybe another 10 seconds and we'll be done gotta say as well the add-ons are pretty good for him uh, the jewel beetle is a very very aggressive add-on means you throw basically end up throwing survivors most of the time effectively a meme add-on but actually very very strong it can lead to some aggressive play styles which is what i think Seven minutes so that worked out well in the first chase and he gets this down pretty quickly as well one generator gone the second generator should be going pretty soon because as he's hung out he's not going to be using pain resonance and now going to let, let's make a quick summary here so we have two stages one generator already being completed we do have luckily a pop goes to weasel kick onto this generator but three survivors are able to spread the pressure and they don't need to worry about any three or four gen setup all they need to do is sitting on the opposite side of the map and getting some progress into the gens here gustavo slowly rotating over this is going to be bucky finishing a generator that is definitely going to be the tie condition being met at this point and then we have <laughs> another generator 70 percent and so far i would say ipic has done brilliant on every single chase here and was ensuring uh, quick down so this was really the win condition and the pressure of the survivor team leading to a potential defeat here we will see if they are able to finish it but right now with ipic staying close around the hook here they will get the objective stuff yeah it looks like those generators will be completed he's going to be able to get this tunnel out onto Wee jason is 10 seconds up before they get to the pallet Oh, waves of the pallet actually um trying to get the early down so they can um, sit under the pallet on the throw actually betrays him the jewel beetle add-on puts him on top of the hill and if they have balance landing that would just be the best thing ever they do they bounce away from that that is so unfortunate for ipec the final generator gets done eliminating the onyx i mean well, that, that was just salt in the wounds there Absolutely, yeah, that was really the salt in the wounds and making sure that the killer notices that they are going to take the victory here as well. Jason, who was playing phenomenally on the Mastermind, is now going to be down. Third stage coming in in exchange for three generators so far. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep up this speed and this pressure that they go for at least one more generator. There it is already. Now it wouldn't even be surprising if they reach the end game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're looking to get survivors out the door here and just make this a more dominant victory over Team Eonix. Can't express it enough. Such, such a strong team being eliminated by Sinners, um, making making their name known, making their name feared, though, um, throughout DVD League. And that, now they're just going to be looking at who they've got next in the bracket bar. <laughs> on to the bracket we go and that's going to be sinners moving on against either eternum or ariandel we are going to have this best of three right after this one deciding who's going to play against sinners and whoever it is eternum or ariandel they should be scared a little bit facing sinners after their performance today and then later on we have synapse and rapture figuring out who's joining torment in the lower bracket semis um but that being said sin is here definitely an absolute blast for the winter circuit they have come in after a long time they represent the south american competitive scene that was not allowed in dbdl due to ping and other stuff for a long time they are showing dedication enthusiasm for the game and honestly with all these pullbacks from most of the challenges they're just so great to watch i mean yeah we're seeing it there and even this play from sweet child around this little filler palette the fact they made it this far and um and stalled out that palette so that final gen could pop before they went down 
um, is beautiful. And that's just a small, small glimpse of what they've shown us throughout the whole of today. If you have just joined us, um, Sin is absolutely phenomenal today. They had a really, really rough set um, as Pinhead, but bounced right back with an incredible nurse and an incredible West to set and follow up. And I think it's a little bit harsh. We touched on the fact that they're going to be playing the winners of Eternium and Ariandel afterwards. Two really, really strong teams. I mean, these guys aren't going to catch a break after, after just knocking out Ionix, are they? Uh, no, absolutely not. They will need to pull the next surprise when moving forward, whoever it's going to be between Eternum and Ariandel here. So Sinus will face further challenges, but we are very confident they can do it. Ionix, congratulations to great performances in the Winter Circuit. Always a pleasure to watch you. Uh, meanwhile, we see a little bit of smashing here onto the survivors. Might be three out of the door actually here. It's going to be thrown around a little bit as well, but should make it in time back towards the exit gate. One last dash coming out with the uh, dodge. No, Gustavo at least leaving with an injury here. Going to say goodbye to IPIC, and that wraps it up. Ionix, thank you for playing in the Winter Circuit. We'll say goodbye to you. Sinners, congratulations of moving forward into the third round of the lower bracket. And we mentioned it, Eternum or Ariandel are going to be the opponents for Sinners right here. And I do think the teams are ready.